62-year-old man, uh, PSA of 6, uh, MRI shows a pyroids 4 lesion uh, with no pelvic nodes. Biopsy confirms a Gleason grade group 3 plus 4 equals 7, grade group 2 prostate cancer, and he is referred for consideration of curative intense treatment, uh, perhaps surgery, and uh, a PSMA PET CT was done. James, do you want to show us what it shows? Yes, so you can see the PSMA PET right here. The prostate cancer, uh, left mid uh, prostate, highly avid, a CV max of 14. And effectively, there's nothing in the pelvis. You don't see any node metastases as you carefully scroll through. You can increase the windowing just to have a little bit more sensitivity, but nothing is suspicious. The only finding is uh, up here in the retroperitoneum. So you do have one focus uh, here with the SUV max of six and a little bit of a nodular, uh, a little bit elongated uh, soft tissue finding, uh, 0.5 millimeters by, um, by about 1.2 centimeters. Otherwise, no metastases other than this finding. Yeah, and that little nodule on the outside PET report was reported as a retroperitoneal nodal metastasis. So that actually makes it M1A disease because it's outside the pelvis. What do you think about that, Declan? Well, you know, this is... Uh, uh, Tom's talk earlier about um, uh, appropriate criteria is very, very important because, of course, this patient shouldn't have had a PSMA PET CT in the first place. It's like looking for directions in Ireland. If you, if you drive up to a crossroads <laughs> and ask a farmer, well, how do I get to Tipperary? And there's, well, I wouldn't start from here if I were you. And that, that's exactly <laughs> the case here. We, we shouldn't start from here. This is favourable intermediate risk prostate cancer. And actually, EAU, NCCN guidelines don't recommend any form of cross-sectional imaging here. Um, so that's very important that um, uh, when we consider an indication for a PET scan, we make sure that we're following some sort of appropriate criteria. And look, these are expensive. You know, when you made the announcement about funding, the loudest yelps in the audience were from the chief executive. <laughs> Did you notice? <laughs> who's the, she wears the cost of all these thousands of scans. And so it's still very important that we, 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 we um, <coughs> you know, have some sort of correct criteria. Um, and I think, I think the, the criteria are going to say intermediate and high risk, Michael, if I recall from the, uh, the expert advice that we were given. So that was quite generous. So in fact, this sort of patient <laughs> will be able to get a funded PSMA PET CT. But I think it's very important that we clinicians recognize there's no data to support the use of an expensive scan like this in this sort of patient who in actual fact guidelines don't recommend any form of cross-sectional imaging. It only leads to confusion and delay. And, and what do you think about this paraiotic node? I'm not looking at it. It should have never have been done. It's good to crack on. <laughs> this man should have surgery or radiotherapy, and, uh, you know, I will unsee it. I can, yeah. You want to unsee it. James, yeah. what do you think about the paraiotic node? Um, well, you do see up in the cervical uh, thoracic uh, junction, you also see some other spots um, where you do expect to see some ganglia. And when you come back to that node, it is a little prominent. You do have, however, you have one on the other side, and it, it is a, a typical location where you do find these uh, celiac ganglia. Uh, so it wouldn't be of any concern. I'd consider it benign, and this patient does not have any metastatic disease. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's actually physiologic ganglion uptake. It's not actually a lymph node, and this was a little bit of a trap early on. We might go back to the slides. Uh, when we started doing PSMA PET, we saw some physiologic uptake in sites that we just don't see with other traces. And a classic trap are these ganglions that do have PSMA uptake. Here is some histopathology of ganglion. <coughs> this was uh, first described by some by German groups as well. Cervical, celiac, sacral ganglia. The key is on the CT, they're linear rather than round. And uh, they're often bilateral, uh, as we saw. So one of the it's really important to be aware of the normal distribution of PSMA PET and all too often we see new centres starting PSMA PET uh, with inexperienced reporters that just kind of learn as they're going along. If you come here to learn how to do PSMA PET, you really need to do a little bit of literature review, reading, uh, spend a few weeks at a centre doing high volume PSMA PET, go to a course like this, upskill because we don't want you record it, reporting normal findings as uh, physiologic or as pathologic rather, and as Tom uh, Hope alluded earlier, we do want to uh, really improve the quality of PSMA PET CT reporting around Australia, and we're now trying to do systematic reports using a template. We're currently using the, the ePSMA template at, at Peter Mac. It means everyone's using the same criteria, makes the uh, things easy for our referrers to find uh, uh, and 
and uh, yeah, for the audience, go off and have a read of this EANM PSMA position paper. It's really quite handy, helps us all uh, report in the same way. Uh, James, do you want to add anything else about standardized reporting and teaching and templates? Uh, no, I think it's just good to, I think clinicians are watching. They do use this information, even what could seem seemingly unimportant, uh, like what kind of tracer was used, what dose. Uh, it can have implications, for example, for the um, you know, referrals to any research projects. Uh, they, they do pay attention. They do expect a certain quality. Uh, so I think it's good to keep that in mind. It's the only idea they have of the case. And looking on um, earlier, George showed a couple of um, reports that were quite drastically different and making it uh, in a way that's easy for the clinician to actually understand without spending 15 minutes on it. That would be, mm. I'm sure you'd appreciate that and mm. save your time. I guess, so, I don't yeah. know, Shanko, do you have any thoughts yeah. about... I think from a clinician point of view, that, uh, as Declan had mentioned, this, you, didn't, you don't want to steer away of this patient from having potentially curative local therapy for their prostate cancer. But even for myself, I've been saved a few times by nuclear medicine colleagues who've reported uh, what has been uptake in sacral ganglia or celiac ganglia, which are really, um, and ask, and the question is, can I give sabre to these oligometastatic nodal disease? And clearly I shouldn't be because they're not actually nodes, but they can be reported externally and you can be led down the wrong pathway.